What's up, everybody? It's your boy. What's going on? You are the sub urban nerd. This is the channel where I give minor reviews on today's nerd news. Sorry, if I talk so fast. I'm. All right, you know what? I'm gonna slow down. I, th I think it's a flash shirt. I, I think that's why I'm talking a little. I think I just tapped in to that speed force. My bad. Let me slow it down. Anyways, like I said, I'm Wes Grant, you're watching Suburban Nerds, this channel where I give my nerd views on today's nerd news. First topic on the nerd rundown is, Mark Ruffalo was speaking with Cinema Blends and he talked about how, um, how Kevin Feige, you know, the person in charge of Marvel, the MCU, pulled him off to the side and was like, hey, if you were to do, if you were going to do a Hulk, wait, if we were going to do a Hulk movie, what would it be? In asking, I guess asking for Mark Ruffalo's uh, you know opinion because you know he's the one that plays Hulk. Uh, Mark Ruffalo was like, I think it should be this and this and this and end up like this. And then Kevin Feige was like, Well, that sounds great. I love it. Um, how about we do that in the next couple movies? So there's gonna be like a, a, a storyline because <clears throat> it's gonna be starting from Thor Ragnarok into Avengers three and then into Avengers four. So there's going to be, I guess, sections of the movie that's going to focus on the Hulk. And this is mainly because, if you didn't know, distributing rights are with Universal. So, if they were to make a Hulk movie, that's why they haven't made a, a standalone Hulk movie. Because if they made a Hulk movie, they would have to share that money with Universal. Because Universal owns distributing rights. So, Marvel ain't in the business of doing that. The only time they really did that was when they were working with, you know, Sony, when they were doing, um, you know, Homecoming. But that was, like, a rare oddity because most, mo mo no one thought that was going to happen, but I believe it was because Sony was, um, Sony wasn't doing as good as you'd think, you know? They had money. Spider-Man did make the money, but the, the company itself was going through financial difficulties, so they kind of worked their agreement. And it worked out for us fans. So... As far as Hulk, that's why you're seeing him in Thor Ragnarok. That's why you're going to see him throughout the city because they don't want to share that money. And everyone loves a Hulk. That's why everyone's like, yo, we want to see a Hulk standalone movie. But that's not really going to happen right now. But this is their, like, backdoor or loophole, as you can say, to making a Hulk movie. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, as far as Mark Ruffalo, Mark Ruffalo is pretty much the best Hulk we've had because um, the... The, the Hulk they had, I forget what the, 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 the director for the first Hulk movie, the one where he kept growing bigger, it was green, which a lot of people hate on, but I definitely, I like that better than the Ed Norton Hulk movie, because when the Hulk was a Hulk, he showed that power, he was in that fight in the desert where he's throwing, swinging the tanks around, jumping on planes, that's the Hulk, the Mark Ruffalo, I mean the Edward Norton one, he could barely knock over a Hummer with his shoulder check. No, that the Hummer should have been rolling. Like they, and then Hulk couldn't jump, leap over buildings. He climbed up buildings, and like they, he, they showed power, but he was dumbed down, like like toned down as far as his power. And I did not like that. He was more, he was a more shredded Hulk as opposed to um, you know, bigger and bulky. When and Mark Ruffalo's Hulk is a nice combination of, of both of them because the second, like this, the scene where you saw him. In Avengers, the first movie, where he was like, what's your secret? He's like, I'm always angry. Then he turns into Hulk, one-hit quitter on that on a big-ass like, flying monster. And that thing just back broke and just fell over. And that's the power we want to see. And then him jumping in a city, that's how you do Hulk. And they, it, But except he was still kind of shredded, but looked more real. So as far as that, it definitely looked great. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing some more Hulk because I... Everyone loves Hulk, especially when, you know, him and Thor right next to each other, bam, like, that's what got people behind him, or the scene where he was with Loki, and Loki's like, you will not, he's like, boom, 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 puny god, you know, like, Hulk stole, stole the scene, but him being, doing his own movie, it could work, like I said, it could work with the, with the right directors and stuff, good story, it definitely could, but sometimes... A good, a, a small chunk of these guys is what it takes to, to, to make it. You know, they don't need to have their own standalone. Because sometimes you have your own standalone, it doesn't work out. I mean, it worked for the, the TV series, yes, in a way, because it was campy back then. But as for now, I like what they're doing. I like what they're planning. So that's it as far as that. Next uh, story on a nerd rundown, it's uh, John Carpenter. John Carpenter, this, the creator of Halloween, clarified that 
this new Halloween movie is not taking place after the second Halloween. It's actually taking place after the first Halloween movie. So everyone thought that, like, you know, after the second one, they're going to disregard all the other Halloween movies that's, uh, that's been made. But they're not even doing that. They're disregarding everything after the first one, which I believe changes up the story uh, between Jimmy Lee Curtis's character then. So we don't know where they can go with it since they're going right after the first one and not the second one. So um, we'll see. I'm, you know, I'm going to probably see it, watch it. Uh, I'm not a huge horror fan unless it's like with paranormal kind of thing. That's kind of that, that's the kind of scary movies I like. I don't like that slasher or what they call like torture porn kind of movies. Which were in torture porn is not like porn porn. It's actually it's actually where um where you just enjoy seeing people tortured and and getting cut to shreds and like you know like mutilated. And I'm not really down for that. But um everybody else, hey, if that's your cup of tea, whatever, by all means, enjoy yourself. Um, next we're going on to the nerd rundown is THR reports that Project Run uh, Project Alchem. <sighs> Sorry. THR reports that Project Almanac director and also the Power Rangers director, uh, Dean Israeli Israelite, uh, has signed on to helm Unexplained Phenomenon, a supernatural family adventure from Spielberg's Albin, Al Albin uh, Ab Ablin Pictures. Uh, the story is described as E.T. meets Poltergeist, where a family encounters otherworldly objects that begin to change their lives. And then it draws the attention of an expert and an, and her teen daughter that may have connections to the object's past. There's no release date. Um, they're going for a franchise. They're already talking about a trilogy. And as far as that, I'm somewhat interested. Uh, I like, I, I definitely like Poltergeist. I like E.T. So them putting together kind of thing. I'm down for what I'm not down for is when you're already talking franchise before the first movies even created or made. So you're putting pressure because we've been seeing that when you plan franchise before it even happens, most of the time it's falling short. Like Power Rangers, which, you know, even though started mentioning it, he's the director of that was slated to have like six sequels before it even came out with the first one. So it's like, really? I mean, granted, I did like the Power Rangers. The new Power Rangers, I like that. I, you know, that movie I enjoyed. I enjoyed the hell out of it. But stating it, it's like that's like that dude that you go into, like you go into a sport, and he's already like bank, like he's gonna be the the MVP before the game even starts, bro. Like, yo, there's a bunch of good players. You thinking you're the best, and you're gonna you're gonna kill this thing. Okay, like get out of your head for a second. But that's why part of me. And the whole, you know, Avatar, like, four sequels, not really down for, because I'm like, bro, like, the Avatar short did great. Top of the, top of the heap is the top of the top, you know, number one in box office, but it's been, like, how many years? And, you know, 3Ds and all that, sure, people like it, but you're, th you're talking about, not even, like, a sequel, just one sequel. He's like, sequel, another third, and then another movie. So, like, four movies, four or five Four, three, two or three more movies after this, after this one. So, jumping the gun on franchise, I don't really like that. But I mean, if you have confidence, sure. But you know, maybe you should plan it. Don't say nothing about it. So and then, when the first movie does good, then you can talk about like franchise. I'm like, you know, that's that's just me. That's just me. But that's pretty much it as far as that. Like, E.T. Poltergeist, Project Albonac. Almanac um, and the uh, Power Rangers director, I'm down. I'm I'll, I'll watch it when it comes out. Like I said, it seems around up my valley. Like I said, I'm not really torture porn, but this is kind of the niche that I like to watch. So we'll see about that. Um, let's next thing we're going to talk about is this trailer that it came about. It's called Happy, and it's a show that's going to be on the Sci-Fi Channel, in, in which it's a, a retired or yeah retired d detective that turns into a hitman. And then he gets shot, and he's almost dead, and he wants to die in a way because his, his life is just run down. And then this unicorn, crazy illu you know, illusion or whatever inside his head while while he's getting revived in the in the ambulance uh, is talking because apparently this unicorn cartoon thing is the imaginary friend of this girl that's been kidnapped and is basically helping 
the this the detective or ex detective find this guy. But this detective is like he's like Punisher. He don't care. He's killing or whatever. Like no holds barred. And it's gonna be like not campy but action, kind of funny. So I don't know. We'll see how that works out. And the last, I'm gonna just give a quick thing because I'm gonna give a little bit more in depth. Uh, uh, reaction to the season premiere of you know the flash and i'll just give a quick one i enjoyed it um i i sort of like the tone and i don't like the tone at the same time but as far as season premieres i liked it better the last one i'll give reasons for it in the and in, in, you know in, in the more breakdown of the my premiere re re review of it but Overall, like I liked it. It it, uh, it seems like he's getting back to the old Barry, which I definitely like because uh, uh, the last two seasons was like emo Barry and wasn't really feeling it like that. But yeah, it, it was it was good. So if you guys were looking forward to Flash and you forgot it was on, but like you really shouldn't because DVR should have recorded it without you even knowing. Um, check it out. So it was pretty fun, and I'll give you a more in depth review on it. Um, I'll see if maybe I'll connect it and I'll put it in uh, my review over here. And uh, and then we'll see. So remember, that's pretty much it for today. I'm Wes Grant. Um, remember to sub. Remember to subscribe over here. Check out yesterday's uh, nerd news, and then I'm gonna put my review of season four premiere of The Flash. So remember, thank you. I'm Wes Grant. You've you've been watching Suburban Nerd, and you've just been nerdified. Catch you guys tomorrow.